Mark Charette. Mm -hmm. Thank you yes. again so no much for <laughs> so much for being here. Uh, no there's a lot of information that we have to cover. Uh, so that I, I won't do it justice, please give us a little introduction of who you are and what you do. Mm -hmm. And you can go ahead and take it away from there. Cool, cool, super, great. Thank you very much for having me, Troy. Um, yes, yeah, so I run a company, I've actually got two companies now because I'm in the process of doing a branding transition for the longest time when I started in photography. I started a company called WorkPix360, which was completely focused on Google Street View virtual tours. Um, so for those of you who know Google Maps and Google Street View, and I often re refer to myself as being the peg man on Google Maps, so that actually, but as opposed to being on the street, I would actually go inside of a business and create virtual tours that are published directly on Google Maps. But you can imagine what happens. You know, you have um, on, on your business card, um, you know, Google Street View trusted, and people see the word Google, and they immediately think you know everything about Google, which I don't, but you want to be able to answer a lot of questions. So what ended up happening is that my business evolved very quickly to being far more than just a Google Street View virtual tour photography service. I started to take on commercial uh, uh, work for just standard imagery, uh, product photography, and even more importantly, uh, helping businesses get found online and how that relates to local SEO. Um, but there's another aspect to that is that when you're building a business and you're starting to branch out like that, you realize that the most important thing, you, you, your biggest and most important asset is really the relationships you're building within your community. So with that in mind, what I've done is I've morphed my business over to being uh, Central Coast Digital Media. And when I say Central Coast Digital Media, people go, Central Coast, ah, there's a Central Coast in California. Not that one. <laughs> I, may, I, I, may, I may not have an Australian accent, but I'm actually just north of Sydney in Australia and just about 100 kilometers north. And that is where the Central Coast is in Australia. There actually are two Central Coasts in Australia. So not the one in Tasmania, that one's tiny, we're far larger. Um, and far larger means 350,000 people. So still a small market area. So my focus is in helping local businesses in essentially making sure that they address three major factors, which is first to be found, then to be seen, then to be trusted which is why this presentation, what I'm gonna be doing today, talks an awful lot about a lot of those elements. So um, that's that's a little bit about me and how, you know, uh, what, what it is that I do now in relation to photography, how it works is obviously the, you know, the final product that people are, are looking to buy from me a lot of the time is in fact, either a virtual tour or headshots for their profiles and for their for their products and that kind of thing. So so there you have it. So shall I start by uh, doing the screen share then at this point, is this a good, good time for that? Yeah. Cool. Okay, super. All right. This program, please, you know, uh, chime up. I can, I can unmute you and we can talk directly to Mark throughout this. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and the more questions, the merrier, because I, the one thing I'm very well aware of is in the photography industry, there's essentially two kinds of photographers. There's either what I call go-to photographers or come-to photographers. Some do both. You know, the come to photographers are the ones that have studios. People come and they come to you, they stand in your studio, you take their picture or you, they uh, a come to photographer, which has a, a product photography studio or they, they're doing pack shots, that kind of thing. You know, they send all the product in or you'll go and meet with the photographer, bring your products in and have them shot. Um, that's the come to. That's a photographer that has a studio that needs to be found physically um, online because that's part of your marketing. The go-to are like you, Troy, and a lot of other photographers that generally speaking, for the most part, do their work at some other premise, right? Like for example, when you actually do a, a wedding, you're, you're gonna be at a venue somewhere. So your relationship in terms of how you market yourself will obviously be very, very different with that in mind. But a lot of the principles stay the same, which is what I'll be talking about here today is really about how do you actually leverage you um, the, the the tools available up to us today to make sure that you're being found by the right kinds of people. So um, I'm just going to click through over here. So the first thing I want to talk about is the power of networking, the importance of networking as a photographer. Really, mo mo most people that are photographers usually they're happier behind the camera. They rarely like being in front of the camera. You know, it's sort of I don't know about you, but every time I try to do a self portrait, I always go, oh, it's horrible. And you know, the funny thing is, is that when and you'll find this quite fascinating, Troy. 
uh, when Frederick and Van Johnson and I had a conversation about a year ago, um, when just when the pandemic was was starting up, we uh, he actually took a photo of me using Zoom that I now use because I like it more than the ones I take of myself. <laughs> you know, it's that whole thing of why is it that we do what we do is because it's actually really hard to get great photos if you try to do it yourself. But that is partially relating to why networking is important because we have to put ourselves out there for people to recognize who we are. And for me, in, in the world of business networking, I, I'm a bigger fan of LinkedIn than any other platform. Now, I realize that for a lot of photographers, you know, Instagram is going to be the first place they go. And they may also be related, you know, using Facebook as a tool. And of course, you're going to use your website too. But for the vast majority of, of relationships that you're going to build, they're going to be in person. Just earlier on, uh, David, uh, Troy and I were just talking about the importance of making, you know, business deals and that most business is usually done in person. Not, we have the, the likelihood of closing business with someone is usually far stronger if you're actually able to be in person. I'm completely respectful and understanding of how challenging things are still for you guys in the States primarily. Uh, you know, Australia, we've been very fortunate that we don't have a, a heavy mask wearing policy for the most part. You know, Melbourne's had a few of those. But what we try to do as much as possible still is get together as, um, in person. And one of the things that I've done along with two other good friends of mine, we are the co-founders of a group called LinkedIn Local Central Coast. For those of you that aren't familiar with LinkedIn Local, it was originally founded by Anna McAfee in Coffs Harbor, which is another 400 kilometers north uh, of me here uh, in Australia, but it's gone worldwide. And if you look in your area, if you go onto LinkedIn or even just type in LinkedIn Local and your community name, you probably will find that there's a LinkedIn Local not too far away from you. And I would be highly recommending that you uh, attend their sessions and participate with those because you'll find an awful lot of people um, really, really use LinkedIn as a great place to get to know someone first because on LinkedIn, we get our full profile, right? There's an awful lot of information about you, your work history, the kinds of places that you've been, the you know the also really the type of, uh, of services that you provide. That's the stuff you're going to put there, even more than you would typically on Instagram, even more than you would on, on, on uh, Facebook. So LinkedIn is a great place to do that. And with the LinkedIn Local Central Coast, what we've done is we actually hold these events as free events. Uh, not all of the LinkedIn Locals are free, but most of them are. And it's a way of simply connecting basically with the person in, uh, as opposed to being strictly on off, offline. And I'll share a little bit more about how I actually uh, use some of the technology that LinkedIn offers to, uh, to facilitate the continuation of that relationship. And beyond that, the other relationships uh, that I build tend to be with a lot of other networking. I actually sometimes get laughed at by a lot of the people I know here in, in on the Central Coast. They call me a networking tart because <laughs> I'm always, I'm always, there are so many different organizations I belong to. I think I last, last count, I think I'm part of seven different networking organizations here on the coast. So you can imagine how busy I am with these things. In fact, uh, like we're, we're, we've got another LinkedIn event that's happening on the last Monday of this month, I'm speaking at a another one that I didn't list here on this slide called the Small Business Networking Group, which is I'm talking about sales techniques at that. So I get asked to be a keynoter, which is one of my other points here is as often as possible, whenever you're part of a networking environment, it's an opportunity for you to also be asked to speak because most networking organizations will usually have a keynote speaker of some type and keynote speaking at a networking event doesn't have to be something complicated. It can be simply, for example, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I'll pick on you, Troy, because obviously, you know, if you think about the number of years you've been doing wedding photography, you could basically say, you know, what are the five things that people have to prepare for when, when getting ready for a photo shoot at a wedding? Like you might have a short list and it's the kind of thing that will help people understand what it is that you do without really selling. I'm a big believer in, in the networking environment. You're not there to sell. It's not about handing over a business card and trying to get an appointment. If you're doing that, you're probably not going to build trust very quickly. I'm a bigger fan of keep showing up every meeting as consistently as possible. And when you do that over time, what happens is you build trust and you get to that point where people start to recognize you as being a person of, of knowledge and of, of consistency and of trust. Right. Now, no, I have no, a I'm question. From... So yes, you've, you know, we're talking a lot about uh, how it is as, as a photographer, but there's a lot of mm -hmm. industries 
that are kind of the same thing, right? Yeah. So you're really just sort of talking about getting out there and and meeting other humans so that they can learn who you are. Because I because I know in, in my business, I never intentionally went out and networked, although mm. now I know that what I did was I networked. Right. Because yep. at, at the wedding, I talked to all the other vendors. Uh, we helped each other out. We, we shared media. Um, I would always help out the locations that I'm working at, help them, you know, build up their social mm -hmm. media profiles because I'm creating media. Mm -hmm. they, they didn't know how to create media. So, mm -hmm. yeah. OK. All right. So yeah. it's, it's also cross platform. Right. So absolutely anybody could be doing this. OK, absolutely. Absolutely. And in, in fact, when you as a photographer offer like in one of the things that I do, I actually will take photos at at events. I always bring my camera when I'm doing networking and I look for opportunities for taking some what I call happy snaps. Right. And I'll offer those up at those happy, happy snaps for people, because sometimes it's still the best photo they've ever had taken of them. Right. And they may go, oh, geez, oh, can I use that for my LinkedIn profile? I, I absolutely. You know, I don't mind. I, I literally because because what that does is it basically it's a starting point because eventually they may turn around and say, hey, Mark, I'd really like to have a properly, you know, shot photo that like that has, you know, a knockout background so that you can place it in wherever you want, that kind of thing. So I've actually got, got a, a number of clients for, for photo shoots as a result of simply just carrying my camera around. And I often have, um, even though, you know, our iPhones are great, we, they take fabulous photos and I have that with me all the time, I'll wear a, um, a, a small DSLR with a small lens on my hip using one of those little hip mounts just so that people can see what it is that I do. They immediately go, oh, you must be a photographer because who else carries <laughs> a camera on their, on their waist, right? So that's often the case. So it's just another way of, of selling without selling. It's not about being pitchy about this, okay? Yeah, so definitely relationships, you know, right? Would you agree? Totally, it's just strictly that. It's just about that. And this is why I'm, I'll move to the next slide over here because it really does talk an awful lot about that. That statement is the single most important statement I can make. It's not who you know, it's who knows you. All right. You need to be recognizable to others. You should be able to be stopped when you're walking down the street or the signage on the back of your car is somewhere because you're doing some work and they go, oh, geez, Troy's doing a wedding at whatever the name of the venue is. He must be busy again. Wow. It's that whole thing of making sure that people know who you are as opposed to you knowing them because you knowing them. I mean, you can go onto LinkedIn and connect with a thousand people very, very quickly. It won't matter at all until you actually add value back to them. And that's the best way to do that. Right, so as right. you can tell, and uh, and to, go ahead. And, and be there to help, you know, Absolutely. Be, be there to be an asset, not to, not to get something all the time because that everybody wants something, but if you show up and be like, Hey, how can I help? Exactly. At any event, right? Just exactly. Anything. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it, it's not hard to be helpful. It's smart and, and be generous also don't, you know, as soon as you get to that point where you start to look like you're trying to negotiate a deal with somebody, you're going to lose them. Seriously. I, I think that that's where things start to fall apart. Be generous with your, uh, with your, with your knowledge and your time. Uh, it, you know, of course, you know, if you're, you don't want to give away your core product, of course, that that's fine. But anything else, especially when it comes to one of the things, this is one of the most powerful things that I've learned in networking is it's, it's when you get to learn a lot about other people, which requires you to talk an awful lot in question form, always ask questions about others, listen more, you learn more about who else might be of better help to the person you're talking to. And that gives you the opportunity to introduce others to someone who might be more helpful for the for the needs that they have. I don't know, one of the things because because I don't do weddings, I have good relationships with a number of wedding photographers here on the Central Coast. So if somebody says, oh, do you do weddings? No, but I can refer you to three great photographers that I can, that I know will, you'll, you'll get along, you know, fabulously well with, and you can pick whoever's right for you. Um, you know, those are the kinds of things that you want to be able to do, but you can't know that until you've taken the time to ask, get more about what it is that they're looking for and earn their trust and demonstrate that you're not there to just be a money grabber. You know, it's about giving first. The other thing that I want to bring up here that's not on this slide that's really important when it comes to LinkedIn is not to look at LinkedIn as a means simply for connecting and trying to do a pitch on LinkedIn also. Don't do it. If you're going to do that, you're going to lose people right away. Simply 
look for people that are what I call what I call second tier connections. So when you go onto your elect, your LinkedIn profile, you're probably already connected with however many people. If you've got 300 people you're connected to, well, those are first tier. But those people are connected to others. And that's what's called a second tier connection. So reaching out to them, and the way I recommend reaching out is when you do, always include a message. Don't just click on the connect button. Put a message in there. There's an option for adding a message in. Don't pitch yourself in there. But what you can do to demonstrate that you care is review their profile, read what they've done in the past. And, and if you're gonna talk about something that will be, make it a little bit easier for you to have a conversation with them, is don't look at what they're doing right now. Look at what they did in their prior role and comment on that or ask a question about that. So for example, someone who was contacting me and says, hey, Mark, I can see that once upon a time you were, you were in retail, you were an operations manager for retail. Someone who does that, I know right away, they've taken the time to find out an awful, an awful lot more about me. If you don't think I'm actually gonna reach back out to this person, I will because they've done the research and they didn't pitch me, right? So the same thing should be reciprocated. So the, the tool that I use the most for connecting on LinkedIn when I'm in person is the QR code. Now, are you familiar with this, Troy? Is this something that you've seen before? I don't know if you're familiar um, with it or not. I am, I am not good at networking and I don't, I think I have a LinkedIn account that maybe <laughs> set it for me. Uh, uh, now to be fair. So no, no, I haven't okay. seen any of this. All I right. Mean, Okay. Pretty much every everything you're talking about is is stuff that I was not really aware of as an okay. official mode of marketing. Cool. Well, <laughs> which sounds I'm, I'm terrible. Actually, I'm going to stop sharing the screen for a quick second. I'm actually going to demonstrate this. All right, so I'm going to stop okay. sharing here, so you can probably see me. And I've got my phone over here. I don't know if you can see that. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my LinkedIn profile. And you can do this, everyone on their phones have this. All right, oh, I've got a, you know, my face, try face detection for unlocking the phone, cool. So once I'm actually on LinkedIn, if you look in the search bar at the top, there's a little QR code button there and you can bring up a QR code. And that's your own personal QR code to link to your profile. So if you wanna connect with somebody on LinkedIn, all they have to do is click on the scan option and they can scan your QR code and you can connect instantly with someone else, done. Who needs business cards nowadays? Seriously, it's that easy. So if you really want to connect with people in person, just use that. But here's the beauty behind this QR code, which is another great thing with it, is you can basically just email that out. You can, you can print it off on your business cards. You can put it on a t-shirt and let people connect with you. What if you're like me and I meet somebody like you and I don't have a LinkedIn account or I don't have LinkedIn on my phone and I don't have the mm -hmm. app yet? So in, in, yeah, in that situation, really my, my usual encouragement is we got to get you on LinkedIn because that's really, that's because really, and it, I, I do believe that from a point of view of if you're going to connect with people from a business to business perspective, even business to consumer, most people already have a, a LinkedIn profile if there's if, if in terms of their seriousness about business. One of the major factors about LinkedIn, why I'm such a big fan of it is because of the fact that when it comes to, to demographics, you'll find that it's a far higher level of average income than most. So if you're trying to find people who will actually have the funds to be able to hire you eventually, it's the right category of people. There's, uh, you know, the, st the studies are there that really the average person who uses LinkedIn, generally speaking, is in a better position to make a buying decision. So that's one of the reasons why I encourage that. And if they're not on there, I immediately start to think, okay, well, quite possibly, they may be wonderful people I'll get to know, and we have a great relationship and have a lot of fun, but probably not gonna be a, a business to business relationship for me. Okay, so that's the way I take that. Oh, yeah, so you're not yeah. gonna you're not gonna hang out with me if I don't have a LinkedIn account. I see what's oh, no, happening. No, actually I do hang out, but I won't expect to be doing business. I got that's it, what it I got is. it. No, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. So, so when it comes to that, so basically use your, your, your QR code as an easy way to connect. Um, and the other thing that you wanna do is make sure you have control over your brand because if people are gonna connect with you, they're gonna to wanna to find out where you show up. That is literally all of the URLs that I own. That's my business. That's not just, that's, now all of it goes back to basically two websites, all right? And the reason why I do that is to protect my brand. 
because if anybody ever decided they wanted to buy anything that was a URL that was close to me, I have complete control over every way that I might be found. And once I actually buy a URL, I don't get rid of it unless it's really ridiculous. It's just something that has nothing to do with me. Up until now, I think of all the URLs I've purchased, I've only ever canceled or not renewed two. And that's in 15 some odd years. Cause I, for the longest time I had a, a, a consulting business, which was caviar. And then I moved into all these other things eventually. So it's all up to, so to me, one of the most important things you can do is make sure that you own these. That doesn't mean you have to have a website attached to every one of these. In fact, I don't recommend that at all. That's actually a really bad idea because that makes it really hard to manage. So all you need to do is do what's called a three, uh, a, a permanent redirect. I believe it's called a 301, if I remember right. It's a, 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 not something that the web guys will do for you if you have a, a web developer. And if you actually go to your GoDaddy page or something like that, wherever you buy these, you can have them redirect to your main website. So I'm a big fan of making sure you have a lot of control over your brand. The, I yeah, and the, yeah, I'm the same yeah. way. I've got I've got several domains that that go around my main domain, and then they all point back, back. to my back to my root. I've even got some like I noticed in there that if you mm -hmm. do like you know Southern California Weddings .com or something like that, because yes, those those tend to come up in a search, and mm -hmm. they all end up back at at my site. So yeah, yeah. and absolutely, domains exactly. are what fifteen bucks a year. Uh, hover, it's, I think is 15 or 18 includes privacy. So it's, it's worth doing. I, I'm, I'm going to move back just so you know, I, I'm, I, there's one I found that's kind of interesting. Can, can you, I don't, know, I don't know if you can see where, oops, where my mouse is hovering here, but there's a, there's one that's called XN double score, in it, but notice that it actually has a little picture of a camera in a world dot WS. Did you, those actually are available to buy from GoDaddy. So if you want to share it, you share it as a camera world dot WS. So basically, since I actually shoot virtual tours, I thought that'd be kind of a cool little way of demonstrating that visually. So if you're ever looking for something quirky, you can buy all kinds of really, and, <laughs> and that was $2 for the first year. <laughs> so like you can get some really good deals on, 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 uh, on URLs that way. The next place I want to go here is having to do with how how ne eventually networking what it does is it means that people have probably you've connected with a lot of people now they're going to hopefully be able to find you but then when they find you if you're like most photographers the vast majority of photographers anyway tend to have a radius of service right like for example troy how what's the furthest place that you've been to to travel for a, a wedding you probably have you gone to like hawaii's and that kind of thing or have you no, kept it pretty close no no i mean it's all within california arizona so six hour yeah. drive maybe something six like hour that. drive yeah. okay exactly and you know in my case i tend to be about a two and a half hour drive is what i tend to limit myself to so what that means is that you essentially have what's called a sab which is stands short for service area business so you service an area for the most part and a, any kind of business that's either a service area business or even a, uh, a studio photographer can have what's called a Google My Business listing. Now, if you don't already have a Google My Business listing, just simply, I've got two words for you, get one. It's simple, okay? And if you don't, and, and if you don't get one, somebody might already be getting one using your name and then you lose control over your own business. That can be pretty risky. I've seen, in fact, I just received a phone call from one of my past clients who basically they dropped off because of COVID. They were a hair, hair salon and the, um, I helped them with their Google My Business listing and then they had to shut down because of COVID for a period of time. And now they're just reopening now, which has taken them a very long time in their case. In the meantime, someone has actually stolen their Google My Business listing because there was a, a an, Google sent out an email saying you know to them saying um basically that you know someone else is actually trying to gain access to your to your business they did nothing about it because they didn't know it was important now that other person has control over their google my business listing pretty scary imagine if your brand was actually in the hands of someone else on google of all places last thing you want to do so make sure that you have control over your google my business listing that's the single most important directory listing you have online outside of your website by far. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, we have a question uh, by Donna. Donna says, mm -hmm. do you think my portrait clients are on LinkedIn? Women 30 to 60, high family income located in my geo area with kids and grandkids for my commercial photo services. I'm assuming would, they are on LinkedIn. 
So yep. can I search for business for business type on LinkedIn? So absolutely you can. You, the um and you don't have to have a, one of the misconceptions about LinkedIn is you have to have a paid account. I don't. Um, my buddy Brendan, who is, you know, has 25,000 people on, on, uh, on LinkedIn connected to, he used to have a business account, he canceled it. Why? Because it's the search tools, even in the free version are phenomenal. You can search based on enough detail to be able to actually find the a right geographic. I, I, I talk about the GDP of networking when it comes to this, which is geographic, demographic, and psychographic. Those three factors are the three things that I use as the models for 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 um, for local marketing. So geographic, are they close enough to you to do business with you? Demographic, basically, that's the basic data based things like age, gender, income, um, you know, uh, work title, those kinds of things. And psychographic is, do they have an interest in? You know, right? You know, are they are they into are they into cycling? Are they into skiing? Are those? That's the psychographic stuff. You know, are they into modeling, whatever the case might be. So with that, usually there's enough information inside of LinkedIn that you can do some really great research and find some people that are, are a good connection. Keeping in mind that the right way to connect with people on LinkedIn, for Donna, I, I would be making sure that you focus on looking for people that you're going to be able to build a relationship with without selling. Remember that that still has to be top of mind. Um, going back to the Google My Business listing, the other thing I wanted to make sure I, I, I tell you about is when it comes to your business name and your business brand, if you don't already have a business name yet, for those who are still thinking about this, seriously think of registering your business name in a way that has some relationship to your geographic area. Now that's, it's a bit of a, it, it's kind of a black hat strategy, unfortunately, but it's one that still works. And at Google is still not getting rid of, and it, it's quite simply one of the reasons why I've rebranded myself to Central Coast Digital Media, because those words you immediately know, I do digital media and I'm on the Central Coast. Like those are all key words, right? So it really helps from a point of view of being found locally. Immediately, as soon as I put my business listing online, I, the phone, my phone started to ring, literally. It was just as, it was literally within about three days. That's how fast it was. So having a business name that really clearly identifies what it is you do and where you do it can be very helpful. Now, the, the, the caveat to that is number one, don't do it if you're already in business with a name that has been highly recognized for a long period of time. Like for example, Troy, you know, imagery concepts has been your business name for a long time. Definitely wouldn't make any sense for you to do that unless you opened a separate business altogether that was focused on another niche or, 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 or service. Um, but if you don't have a, a name already, that's one way of going about it. The other thing too, is to make sure that you have all of your details fully updated and fully optimized because the single most important reputation management tool you have in your business is Google. Um, you know, there's a, I, you know, I say this all the time, but it's what part of Google did we not understand? Like when I say the word Google, like, does that not ring bells that you should be on Google? People say, well, how did I find you? I found you on Google. Well, what does that mean? They didn't find you on Google for, by accident. It's because of the fact that you probably had some kind of data that Google could find of you. Then that, what, does that not make sense that you should also make sure that your directory listing on Google, on Google's own assets is optimized as possible, right? And what do people do with Google? They look for your name, your address, your phone number, your website, and what else? The photos, of course, if you're a photographer, they're going to look at your photos. So you want to make sure you have photos there. And finally, your reviews, because Google reviews by far are still, no matter what level of trust you might have, the public still votes with their, basically with the way they click and reviews are used by most people as a means of vetting before they call. And what are they looking for is they're looking for both the positive and negative reviews. People will read the negative ones often first. Why? Because of the fact that really what they're looking for is the waterline of danger that they want to avoid. It's like, what's the worst experience anyone's ever had? And does it look legit, right? So they'll read the worst possible review and then decide on, uh, is this going to happen to me? Like if I actually dealt with this business, you know, would that actually be likely? And most people, people are astute enough to realize that if the, if the review has been written, that's a, that's a spam review or that's, that's, that's not really a real client. Somebody's just, you know, it could even be a competitor trying to, trying to spam you. 
those kinds of things, people read between the lines on that stuff. So don't worry about having a couple of bad reviews. I, I've spoken to, I don't know how many photographers who've said, I don't want to be on Google because I'm scared of getting bad reviews. I'm going, really? <laughs> it's like, seriously, like it, number one, have some pride for in your work, because if you do great work, you'll get great reviews. Anybody who gives you a bad review will probably end up being someone you wouldn't want to do business with anyway. If it's real absolute spam where it's, it, it, it um, goes beyond the scope of the standard terms of service within Google, they can actually be removed. Um, and you know, you can actually, I've had, I've had some clients of mine that have had bad reviews on theirs, on their profiles. And I was able to assist them in having those, re, uh, those reviews removed because they were not a proper representation of their business. They had nothing to do with them. Now, okay, so uh, Donna, mm -hmm. Donna is asking a question that I was thinking, um, mm -hmm. can you respond to the Google negative reviews or even the positive reviews I'll add as we can I do on Yelp? Absolutely. And it's necessary. Think of reviews as a social conversation. They are, it's necessary to respond to every one of them. Imagine if someone said to you, thank you. And you didn't say you're welcome. It's kind of incomplete, isn't it? Right. Or if somebody says, I'm angry at you and you don't say, I'm sorry. Really? It's the same thing, right? So make sure you have that as a conversation and be authentic. Don't try to solve the problem online. If you have a problem, and be careful about the way in which you respond to those reviews, good and bad. Just be simply thankful as much as possible. Even in, in the bad review, there's times when my, my, my recommendation to my clients has been, if you get a negative review, thank them for their candor and their, their honesty about the service and that you, know, you will do everything you can to, to, to help them out and, and, and reach out to them personally. You know, it's the idea is just to take the problem offline, right? That's the idea. But definitely every review should be responded to. The only kinds of businesses that I tend to, to, and this is obviously not photographers, but are those where there's actually restrictions in some countries. Like in Australia, doctors, uh, dentists, are they can respond to review, but they've got to be very careful because they can't be responding to a review in such a way that it allows people to think that it's, a, uh, it's medical advice. You know, there's those kinds of things you've got to be very careful about. Um, the reason why I have all of the other um, I, um, icons on this screen with regards to uh, directory listings is because those are all the other places in which your business brand can also be found. Now, remember that if you're, if you're uh, a location-based studio, you want to make sure you're not just on Google Maps, you're, you want to be on Apple Maps. Because how many people buy an, an Apple iPhone and walk out of the store and decide they want to call somebody or find something and don't know the difference between Google Maps and Apple Maps. Some people just don't know the difference. And imagine if your business is not on Apple Maps. You know, what, what does that work out to being? Roughly 30% of the population that probably prefers Apple Maps and will search using that first? Oops, you know, that's a big mistake to be, to, to be losing, losing that out. Um, again, Yelp, big, big for you guys in the States. Yellow Pages is, still has its place because it's not so much because it's a big place for people to search, but it's a place whereby Google uses to vet the authenticity of a business. So what happens in the world of directory listings is that the more directory listings you have, the easier it is for Google to know that you're legit, that you're out there. So I, there, there is also a limit to how many directory listings you should have. I, I don't, I'm not a big believer in having 150 listings or 200 listings. And Troy, I sent you that report and you, you mentioned to me earlier on when we were having a chat in the green room about how many different listings you'd never even heard about, like Brown Book. And yeah, there's, you're right. There's an awful lot of directory listings out there that you may have never heard about. They may or may not be that important. What you want to make sure you do, though, is focus on essentially a, a group of tier one, tier two, and tier three directory listings. Tier one is Google My Business, Bing, Apple. Those are the tier ones, okay? It used to be Yellow Pages, and Yellow Pages is now a tier two. And inside of the, the tier two category would be Yelp, all right? That's tier two. You may find some other directory listings, like I don't know how big Craigslist is still in, in the US. I know it was for a long time. Uh, you may yeah, want to, it's, big yeah. it's probably pretty big. That might be tier two. The other ones that are, are, are tier three are the Brown Books and the Chambers of Commerce and that kind of thing. The beauty with those tier three ones, though, is that they can be very, very specific and distinct to an industry. So like, for example, if there are, are, are um, 
business associations uh, like the you know IEPPV or anything like that being listed on these is a it, it's a checkpoint for directory listings. So one of the things I recommend, I don't know if you have this on the IPPV, but having a directory listing of members where there's a full business profile of all the members, that becomes a, 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 a an effective marketing tool for them and a proof of authenticity in search. So it's a it's a tool that you can actually use to help in search results. It's a local SEO um, tick point to, to keep in mind. Oh, that's interesting. So the reason why I started doing all this stuff having to do with local SEO is because as I tell people, it's complicated. <laughs> Most businesses get lost. If you look at the number of touch points that do exist in local search, it can get really confusing. But the, the other factor that's really important to remember when it comes to reputation is that most of these directory listing programs or, or, or tools like Yelp also are a review platform. So if you're going to get reviews on third party platforms, you need to have control over the directory listing that is also listed there for you. You can't have one without the other. So that's why making sure that you take care of your local SEO is so important is because it gives you a place for to, to send a request for review to your clients. Otherwise, how are they going to give you a review that's pub, on a public platform or that you actually can control? So one hand washes the other when it comes to that. They're interconnected. You can't have one without the other. Makes sense. All right. So power of views. There's some here's some crazy statistics for you. 90% of consumers read online reviews before visiting a business. 90%. That's 2016. It has dropped a little bit. I think it's like 83%. I don't know. I don't know. But to me, that sounds like a, a still a pretty high statistic. Um, but you know, if you look at, you know, Yelp back in 2013 was 82%. Now it's sitting roughly about 65%. The last time I checked, I have to update these stats a little bit, but the, the, the key thing here is to remember that having a lot of reviews on a lot of different platforms, not just Yelp, not just Google, um, you know, recommendations now is what you have on Facebook and also recommendations on LinkedIn all help to basically build your brand because it's other people saying nice things about you. Now, the thing about that is once they've said nice things about you, what do you do with that? Other than say thank you to them, why not use that as a marketing tool, right? So that's why what I recommend is you, is you think about exactly how does that impact your, your, your search results? Because really, you're looking all the time for ways to make sure that you've, you know, you've addressed all the key elements in search. And so Google My Business is primarily about relevance in search, distance, prominence, and authority. That's what Google My Business is. But what reviews does, which is really cool, is it's that last turning point that creates conversion. Because if you think about it, what do people do? If you think the life cycle of a sale, you know, somebody's looking for a photographer, it might be where they're looking for, it might be a graduation shoot, let's just say as an example. And so they'll go and look at, you know, the, the website of the of a photographer, but people immediately go, wow, you're only gonna put up your best, best photos. No surprise, of course you will. And then they're going to look at where, you know, where, who else you've shot, what other places, you know, do what businesses you've done, um, you've, you've done work for, uh, what other families have you done work for? And then they're going to look at your reviews. If you have no reviews or no, no one else saying nice things about you, then it's like, that's a, that's a, well, that's a big hole. And if all of the reviews you have are on your website and that's the only place they could be found and they weren't on a third party platform, then it, it, people will start to think, well, you could have just made that stuff up, right? You could just literally write your own reviews and post them on your website, like a, just like a social, like a, just like a writing a, a blog entry. So how much trust is there in that? So the key here is, is that if, what if you're able to take your reviews and put them on your website, but they're actually the Google reviews, they're actually the Yelp reviews. They're, they come from people posted on these third-party sites, but then you can showcase them directly on your website. So that's one of the services that I provide as tools to be able to do that. So you can actually take your reviews and then showcase them. All right. Now, so, do you think it's uh, do you mm -hmm. think it's appropriate to ask your clients to review you after you've provided a service or if you've done some business with them? Um, I, I'll go I'll go a step further. To me, it's mandatory. All right. It's like it may sound a little. You know, I don't want to say harsh, but it's like that whole thing of, are you proud of your work? Do you actually provide quality services? You know, yeah, if you think about it, what you want to do is you want feedback in the end, right? What we all want is feedback that basically 
tells us we're doing a great job. And so asking your customers to provide you for, with a review to me is, is standard practice. It's every single customer I have. And the way that I do it is I don't do it in person necessarily. What I do though in person is I tell them you will be receiving when you when you when you receive your invoice for the work. Because I actually in my work I actually send the invoice post work. I, I send the invoice with publishing because the way the way no obviously obviously some other photographers might work differently where there's deposits in advance and that kind of thing. Whatever the case might be. But what I always do is during at the end of my shoot is I tell them by the way you're going to get an invoice from me and there'll also be a link in there requesting that you provide me some feedback on, on the services that I provided to you. And that feedback link is in fact actually a link to multiple platforms that allows them to choose which one they want to leave the review on. Okay, so it, I leave it to them as to if they want to leave it on Yelp, on Google, or on LinkedIn, or I'll usually limit it to three, because if you give more than three choices, people start to get confused and they just don't do anything at all. Right, you got to keep keep it simple. And you may actually want to also change those up. So for periods of time, you focus on Google, and then you may take Google off for a while. Let's say that you're up to 35 or 40 or 50 reviews on Google and you're saying, well, I'm doing great here, but my Yelps are suffering. And then you might focus on Yelp for a while and you might swap that around. Uh, but definitely asking for reviews, standard practice, every single cost, uh, customer I deal with. Got it. So what, so what happens is that you can then start to take these reviews. If you look on the right-hand side of that screen, those are actually, that's a screenshot from the reviews on my website. All, and you'll notice that what I've been able to do is show that those reviews are actually on LinkedIn, show that they're on Facebook, show that they're on Google. So it shows that it's not me trying to control or, or write these reviews up myself. These are authentic because it actually shows the person's name and that actually left the review. Um, so that's really what it's about. It's about being able to showcase that. Now, the thing about this is that by using tools that allow you to do this, you can then also use these as social media posts. So when I do a social media post every once in a while, I'll actually showcase the business I've done the virtual tour for. And then I'll then a few days later, also send out a, uh, another social media post, which is the review that they did about the services that I provided. So it's, so it's based and, and my comment is, isn't it amazing when you get fantastic, you know, love like this back from your customers. So it's me thanking them for having hired me. So it's not a who, who, you know, who, who, you know, I'm, I'm a great photographer. It's not about that. It's not about boasting. It's about demonstrating thanks once again. Nice. Um, nice. Okay. The, on the left-hand side, the directories listing that I'm, um, re um, report is basically an example of that report that I sent to you, Troy. Uh, and I, 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 it'll be up to you if you decide you want to share that information out or yeah, not, or if you yeah, want to, definitely. yeah, let's, yeah uh, we, we can do that at the end of the show, if you want, and we can go over yeah, that and I can show you how report. I studied that out. Yeah, because this this over here, those directory listing reports that I produce, what that does is it actually shows you where you actually show up online. I do a scrape with my, my system that allows me to see how you're doing in terms of reviews, directory listings, um, and overall local SEO. And this over here, it gives you a really good starting point to say, all right, here's what I need to do. All right, so it might be where I'll, and, and part of my conversation with my clients is, do you show up with, do you do a lot of networking? Yes or no? Okay, cool. Do you ask reviews? All right, how many, you know, I'll actually go through that process. Do you take your own photos? Do you already have a relationship with a photographer? Once I know what they're doing, then I can then give them the best guidance as to what they may want to uh, tackle first. Because sometimes the first thing I can do to help them out is not providing a virtual tour. It may, because if, the, my, if, if I walk through the front door of a business and they don't even have their Google My Business listing claimed, I'm not shooting a tour for them. Well, I'll shoot it, but I won't publish it. I wait till it's actually fully under the control before I publish it because otherwise, essentially what I'm doing is I'm helping somebody else, not them. You know, last thing I want to do is, is, is not help my client. Um, this particular screen over here that I've got is something that I'm, I'm happy to share out. We can put it as, as a link, um, um, as a, uh, I actually have a, on my website, I have a link with a bit of an explainer with what this is. What I did is I created this infographic that helps you see all of the different elements that Google My Business actually has inside of it and why I think it's the single most important digital asset outside of your website. Where else can you host your name, address, phone number, um, you know, the, the best photos of your business, a virtual tour of your business, um, you know, uh, and if you're, if you're a photographer, obviously in your go-to, you wouldn't shoot a virtual tour uh, of your business, but what you can do is at least put up a lot of your own photos as part of your content, showcase your work the same way that you would on your website. Um, videos, 
you can have conversations because there's actually, believe it or not, there's actually a messaging tool built into, into uh, Google My Business. A lot of people don't realize that. Now, the one thing I will tell you right now about the messaging service inside of Google My Business, you'll only turn it on if it's the only messaging service you're going to use. Because otherwise, if you're, especially if you're a sole operator, you know, you know what it's like when you got six different messaging systems, you get really confused. You don't know which one to answer or to watch for. So it's one that I may suggest that you don't turn on unless you're going to really focus on that. Okay. Uh, but definitely making sure that you optimize your Google My Business listing as much as possible and keep it up to date. And one of the most effective ways to keep it up to date is to put up posts. Google My Business has the capacity to have posts just like social media, but it's not social media. It's data for Google. Think about this. Every time you put information on Google, think of their, 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 the, the Google Photos technology. They, they have the ability to put, if you actually take a photo of a plate of pasta and you show it to Google, it'll tell you if it's linguine. Seriously, it's that smart, right? Okay. So, of course, you want to put photos on Google, right? Of course, you want to do posts on Google because you're giving Google data about your business. One of the things I often speak about in, in when I'm speaking, at, especially chambers of commerce and all that, because people get really worried about giving their privacy away. I say, you know what? Your private life is your private life. But if you're in business, you want to shout as loud as you can about what it is that you do. And the best place to do that is on Google and using their own asset. So, this is a good guide. Uh, to, you know, you print it, you put it up above your desk on your cork board, and once a week, you try to do one thing on there. Just one thing. Doesn't matter what it is. It, it might be you post a video, it, you might put up a post, you might add one photo, you might just make sure that your 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 address and phone number still hasn't changed, nobody's tried to change it on you, that kind of thing. Got it. And uh, see, those are those were the things that, that I didn't even know existed. That's but but yeah. to be fair, I've been in business such a long time that I don't see those things that I'm I'm looking for, right? Like I'm not looking to do that kind of heavy marketing. Yeah. Although yeah. I have other projects, as you know, like F64 or right. um, you know, pack artists. Mm -hmm. These are these are the ways of of you know getting those businesses out there. Absolutely. And in fact, one of the best ways I can think of for anyone who does a lot of things like you do, and, and a, a lot of photographers, you're not alone, obviously, we all tend to be very much into helping a lot of other people because, you know, we're, right. you know, you know, person with camera. So we take a lot of photos of things and people get excited about what we do, right? So when you're actually creating all this content, you know, helping everyone else out is a great way to go about it. Now, these two uh, QR codes, once you actually get the, the present, if you actually have your, your phone out and you're good at reading QRs, this will take you directly to the app for Google My Business. So if you don't actually, you got it. How's that? <laughs> I just tried it right off the, right off the Bang, screen instantly. Share, yeah. Take you to the Google My Business. So if you don't already have access to your Google My Business listing, um, you know, just scan that QR code right now and get in there and claim your business or be in control of it. It's as simple as that. And finally, uh, if you uh, want to scan my QR code, do you have a QR code for your business and for your URL? You know, you can scan my website just by clicking on that. So have a QR code. That's another great way to be able to help people just be able to easily find you. Because nowadays, QRs have become really popular. For the longest time, people, no, nobody was using them and was wondering, what, what are these things? You know, and I, I used to have to tell people, yeah, it's something that, you know, anyone traveling from overseas would use. Now I tell them, it's just about everybody because <laughs> it's yeah, a popular it's, tool. It's a, it's a big deal. It's one of the things that like uh, Peter and I are talking about doing for his um, art display at yes. the, this big festival is putting a QR code next to every photo mm -hmm. that links to a specific page for that photo. Right. And that's, right. that's, that's going to be able to link into other things and then give people context to that. So the QR exactly. code is, is pretty cool there. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And that's and then and that's it. So um, I, that's just a recap um, sl on the slide that I, I also throw in just because everything is on one sheet. Um, so I'll just stop sharing now. So I don't know if there's anyone who's actually have questions. I'm more than happy to try to answer some of them. Yeah. Is there anything you know out what, there that what we could we could also you could bring up that uh, that report that report. Donna, you want me to bring that up? Cool. Yeah, Donna. Yeah. So Donna has a has a has a question in there. Um, you know what? Let's do let's do this, Donna. I'm I'm gonna go ahead and open up the microphones, and I'll let you guys all unmute yourself, unmute themselves, and you guys go ahead and start your video as well. And that way, as soon as uh, as soon as Mark is ready, 
Mm-hmm. Donna, I'll let you actually ask him verbally if you like. If not, we can just go off of your off your reading there. So that's entirely up to you. So, so are you ready? For your question? I'm ready. Yep, go yeah, for Donna, it. Go ahead. I've been getting these text messages that say my cell phone is that I have a cell phone number that's used for business, and what the message says is Google My Business detected number for Donna Edmond Photography is a mobile number under updated policy. Phone number used for Google My Business listing must opt in to receive SMS from customers or else the mobile number will be removed from the listing within 45 days. You want to continue to use your mobile number. So, but there's no, I mean, do I just respond? Yes. 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 If you use that number for your business, then definitely respond with a yes, because that's how people are going to essentially connect with you. So now, did you get a chance to actually, do you have the Google My Business app on your phone? I do. I, I have had that for a while. And I was just okay. while you were speaking, I was setting up the um, the Apple app. Okay, cool. But I haven't finished that yet. All right, cool. No, super. No, there was such a thing. So thank you. Yeah, cool. No, it's, it's excellent. Because you know what, any any kind of a business and I'm seeing Peter, you're in here too. Good to see you. Uh, with with regards to like, for the studio, the pack artist studio, having a very strong Google My Business listing for that, that's hypercritical. That's like, that would be the kind of business that I would be superbly focused on and making sure you get reviews on Google My Business because that's going to be the first pl- place that people go to read and to respond and to, you know, or to provide reviews um, with what their experience was like. And it doesn't always have to be just customers, by the way, especially if you're a retailer. Like one of my clients is actually a, a BMW dealership. And I, and I still look after, I, tr- I help them out as much as I possibly can. So one guy, he owns a BMW the mini garage, and he also owns a um, 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 a Lexus dealership. So he I, and I help him with all of the reviews on all, all, all across all, all those platforms. And he, they get a lot of reviews for people who walk through the front door, look around and just go, wow, this place looks great. Or on the bad side, it took forever to get customer service, you know, like that kind of thing. So helping people basically or with the responding to these things is critical. Here's another little tip. Don't be worried about having a perfect five-star review um, status. It, it's almost better to be somewhere between 4.2 to 4.8. It looks more legit because nobody's that perfect, right? Now, sometimes you are really good and you've only got good reviews. I, I'm still sitting on strictly five stars, but it's primarily because of the fact that I, I go to the nth degree to service my clients. Um, and sometimes it's difficult if you're in a retail environment. But definitely focusing on getting those reviews and, and and not being worried about the occasional negative review. It just looks more authentic. So you know, if anyone ever feels like, oh, I don't really know if I want to go down this path because I'm scared about people saying bad things about me. No, bring it on. You know, show show your show your broad shoulders. Yeah, it makes sense. And by the way, I stopped the screen share just because I wanted to switch back to to your pretty sure. face while you were. <laughs> <laughs> All good. Cool. Any other questions here? I'm, I'm trying to read through what was here also. Uh, I, think we, uh, I think Donna's big question was the one that she asked. You yeah, really, yeah, absolutely. Which I'm glad she did because it's a lot easier <laughs> to hear the voice. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, especially because often the, the challenges I run into when I'm helping businesses with um, with um, basically review generation and, and even LinkedIn profiles and that kind of thing, there's a lot of context involved with these things. It's not a straight line. You know, there's a lot of things like, especially you know I, I'm one of my one of my clients is actually a photographer who who does she does basically portraiture for women she's she does strictly just that and her challenge was she didn't really she didn't want to have reviews that were going to get ultra personal because the conversations she has with her clients are very very personal in nature and i said to her i said well quite simply Make sure that when you ask for those reviews, guide them a little wee bit and tell them, like, say, you know, we'd love to have some of your feedback, but, you know, and just say, but by the way, make sure that you keep it as such that, you know, you know, remembering that this is going to be publicly available for everyone to read. So, you know, make sure that you feel comfortable or at ease with what you say uh, in the review. Just, you know, making sure you're open to that. So, so, so. How, how, where would you suggest that somebody start? Like they're, they've just started a business. Maybe they're in the first five years, you know, that sort of beginning yeah. stage. Do where, where should, what, what would be the, like the top three order of business? I mean, is it Google? Mm. Is it LinkedIn first? Is it, you know, mm. 
because there's yeah, so th there's so many places right absolutely absolutely I, the first one I always tell people is, is number one is is your business name and your URL okay have control over those business assets that really matter almost more than a business registry today control that first um, and then use that to basically build out from there and then usually the next one is going to be your website that said there's a lot of people out there who actually succeed without ever having a website and i'm, I'm not a fan of that because that's the only asset that you own really because all of these other platforms the, the thing that you got to remember with social media and google reviews and linkedin reviews and all these other things that's like rented space that's like a billboard that you're renting space from you know you're really you, you have very little control if for example one day linkedin decides to set, you know shut down operations and it's like oh well, now I'm stuck, right? So don't put all your eggs in that basket that you don't have any control over. So start with basically having control over your own brand. Recognize that the order in terms of search is always going to be from Google first. So Google My Business would be the next one. All right, that would be the other one. And then of course, if you already have a LinkedIn profile, making sure that you have a business page for your Google My Business listing and you that you post not you don't have to post a lot on your business page but you have to post at least every once in a while because that's really where the engagement is moving more and more towards it took a long time for for linkedin to recognize that as being an important thing but now we're at the point where they really are going to be focusing more and more on the business pages on linkedin and in the b2b world that's where you you, you, you know you, you find out who the ceo is you find out who the marketing manager is you find out all these that's, you know, and you're looking at where do they work for before, because who knows, you might actually find out that they used to work at a company that you know a lot of the people at, you know, there's all this other stuff that comes out of LinkedIn. It's such a powerful tool that way. Um, so, so in terms of that order of events, it's definitely your brand in, in terms of registry, um, your website, Google My Business and your LinkedIn profile. Um, for, depending on what kind of business you're in too, though, obviously, if you're, uh, if you're a, uh, um, you know, a, somebody doing a lot of social media engagement stuff then obviously instagram you know that's that's a that's a given like i actually don't use instagram most people go you're a photographer and you don't use instagram i said nah i don't why because with the work i do with virtual tours they actually don't post they actually don't physically work on on instagram so it, for me to post there is a real pain because i actually have to convert them into a video and it loses a lot of its power but for someone who's a uh uh, uh, a social media um, entre you know, um, engagement specialist, that's probably one of the places that they'll go. So, so you're thinking strategically about where your audience is going to be found. Right. And the type of audience, because I know a lot of yeah. photographers, I was going to ask you, you know, where do you put Facebook in there? Because I know mm -hmm. a lot of photographers, when they get started, the first thing they do is they, they're, they're on Facebook. They've been on Facebook. They, they go to the groups on Facebook. And then, so they start promoting and marketing to clients on Facebook. Yep. And I've seen that it's a lower quality return of clientele there. And I'm Correct. just wondering where you put Facebook in that. The, you know, it's the, dropped. Google My Business. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, Google My Business is, is way ahead of all of that from a business perspective, especially in a B2B and even B2C. Because once again, you know, if you ask someone, I'll bet you 80% of the time, if you ask somebody, how did you find me? They'll say, I found you on Google. And then you got to ask yourself, well, what did that mean? Did they find your URL to your website? Did they find you because you bought some ads on Google ads and you ended up at the top of the pack because of that? Or did they find you on your Google My Business listing? You know, uh, in fact, actually, I, I can just show you. I'm, I'll do a screen share because this is something that I, I can really point out as to how this works. Um, this is a really, really cool way of being able to see this. Uh, where is, okay. So I'm showing a search that I did for your business specifically, right? So you can see that. So imagery concepts, that's your Google My Business page, Troy, right? You can see that, all right? Okay. So I, because I looked for you by name, by brand, okay? But what I'm going to do now, I'm going to open a new tab and I'm going to do a Google search. So I'll type in um, uh, wedding photographers, Corona, California. What do I get? You don't show up, mate. Okay. But you could right what does it take use google my business a lot more get more reviews put a lot more photos up there do some posts and guess what these guys like orion and danny ray and you know these guys they'll all be they'll drop down the pile and you'll eventually get in there but that's a good question is that you know my my business 
Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop your screen share so we can see each other. Yep, go ahead. Um, mm -hmm. My business is more of a, of, a, of a referral type of business. Of course. And I work directly with other clients and, and other yep. vendors and other venues. And so, you know, I've never, well, I shouldn't say never, but I, I mean, I don't get business from Facebook, from Instagram, sure. from Google searches, you know? Okay. So how does, how does a business like mine, which I see the value in what you're doing, but how mm -hmm. do I tailor my social mm -hmm. media presence and my, my search results to fit my business? Because to be honest, I don't want a hundred phone calls. Of course. You know? Yeah, I absolutely. Want five. Yeah. You want quality top rate five. Absolutely. So in your case, it's more about thinking in terms of if, you know, and you probably are in a, in a, anyone who has been in business for a longer period of time struggles, should struggle less in finding new clients. So of course, this is more applicable for someone who's either in growth phase or relatively new, right? They're looking to grow their business or they're looking or, or they're relatively new. That's where it's the, the most important. But that said, if you think in terms of the fact that you could be leveraging it as a means of, of basically authenticity checking, because imagine if you get a referral from one of the venues. And they say, oh, yeah, talk to Troy. He's a really good guy. They get your business card. And then they do a Google search. They read your reviews. They're impressed with their reviews. Now that they've read those reviews, they go, okay, all right, this guy's really legit. I'm going to pick up the phone call. Got it. So How many for me, it wouldn't necessarily be about being at the top of the search results. It would be no. more about having. Uh, that first brand search, you know, that first one where, where basically just your business came up because they would be then looking for imagery concepts because you would probably that venue handed over your business card. So they're not going to be looking for photographers in Corona. They're going to be looking for you, right? So that's what's called a branded search. Yeah, but mm -hmm. it's giving authenticity to my business Correct. by having those things there. Okay. Exactly. And that makes sense. Because, exactly. you know, I'm, I'm thinking of like, you know, like Peter, for example, or even, mm -hmm. even my daughter's business or mm -hmm. uh, David's girl, you know, the, the stuff that she does in the marketing and the, and the products, like some of that stuff is by search. Yeah. You know, if, if Absolutely. somebody wants to do a search for fine, you know, fine art or, you know, gallery mm -hmm. showing or some of the products that, um, that some of us make, mm -hmm. then you need to be at the top of those search results. Absolutely. Yeah. And by the way, that, that search result that when I just did the wedding photographers, Corona in general, you'll notice that there was three businesses listing. It's known as the three pack. And that varies to being sometimes it, at one point in time, there used to be seven businesses listed and Google brought it down to three. And there's even talk that they might bring it down to two. Um, so you, so you really want to look at making sure that you really focus on that from an optimization perspective and reviews. But, and one of the other things to keep in mind with reviews is that if you, if you have five reviews and no one else in your industry or anywhere close to you has five reviews, you'll rank higher than them because you just got more reviews than everybody else. But if you have 10 reviews and someone else has eight reviews and somebody else has seven reviews and someone else has 15 reviews, then what happens is then it's not just reviews. It's the, it's a combination of how many times have you been searched before? Um, um, ha, what, what is your, what's your SEO on your website has an impact on it too. It does act. It's one of the factors that actually impacts your Google, my business listing. And the thing that I've found more, pe more people do, and this is often, they'll tell you that they found you on your website. You'll also see that your website link is directly available via the Google, my business listing. How many times have people actually that you might not know about looked for you on Google found your Google My Business listing and clicked on your website link there. Oh, that's right? Interesting. Mm. So could we go over that report that you sent sure. me uh, and, and give us a little insight on one, how, how you generated that or how somebody else might generate something like that or sure. hire you to do that? Um, yeah. Explain that. Sure. No worries. Let me just pop back into that and, now. And for those of you watching, he sent me this report and I'm looking through it and I'm like, I didn't know any of this stuff about my business. Like I had, I had no idea. And like, you know, this is something like Peter, this would be really important for like ICLA, uh, for PAC. Um, mm. Just, you know, somebody who's doing a search for those type of things. This is, mm -hmm. this is really good info. Yeah, it's, this is a report that I produce as sort of like that, that, that first point. If someone wants to, they say, look at, I, I'd like to hire you. 
but I don't want to just hire you to be just a photographer. I'm looking for help to make sure you're doing the best thing for me. And that's what I try to guide people to. As I say, let's start with doing this report because what this does is it gives me sort of a waterline of where you're at digitally, okay? And the first thing that you'll see here is a, is a basically a, a, a visual icon-based rating of your links and authority. And it says that in your case, it's good. Okay. And I'm not surprised that it would be good in your case because I believe Kira's done a pretty good job with your website. And that's where a lot of that comes from. Okay. Um, from the links and authority, that side. But on the flip side, the on site SEO says that it's poor. Now, that I'll be able to show you a little bit more about afterwards. The rank checker, in other words, you're not showing up in rankings and comparisons to a lot of other photographers that highly. And that's basically because a great part is you probably haven't focused on that because you haven't had to, right? right? You're, you know, if you're really dealing with, primarily you know, a referral based business, that rank checker has simply just not been important to you. And that makes sense because also if you look at your local listings, it says it's okay. So you've got a couple of listings. I know we've talked in the past that you mentioned that Yelp has been a place where you seem to get some traction with. Um, yeah, so we've that's never asked for mm -hmm. reviews and we've never, we've never, you know, made an effort to get reviews. They just trickle in occasionally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's my business because we have always worked with other professionals. So yeah. in recent years, or probably this last decade, I mean, we do get referrals from other brides, but most of them come from venues and other professionals. Right. And, and that makes perfect sense. Whereas if you think of your competitors and how they struggle to catch up to you, right? <laughs> That's why right, they're spending right. all that time. That it's a, <laughs> In some ways, we're actually speaking about them, <laughs> you know? So that's the funny thing. But, and then, so if you look at your Google My Business, it says you haven't done a whole lot. And that's pretty obvious uh, based on the fact that right. you haven't really posted any photos. And that's cool. Like, you know, and again, this is only simply just a, a report. And, and the other thing to keep in mind with these reports is that they're just that, they're a report. They don't necessarily... This, this isn't like God speaking, you know, <laughs> this is just a, a, a layer of, uh, of information that gives you a starting point. And I can, I'll explain the first section over here, which talks about links authority and, and Google index. The majestic C flow is just a, a technical term that basically says how you compare to your competitors in terms of this measure called majestic flow to get into a lot of detail about that. If you want to read more about it, you just, you know, hover on top of the, uh, the little question mark, you can click on that and it'll explain what these things are. So if you want to dig in a little deeper and learn more about these things, um, you can read more about them. I don't spend a lot of time on link, uh, links and website authority because that's not really what I do. That's part of what I, when I produce these reports, I actually tell my clients, part of this is for me and a big, big part of this is for your web developer or your SEO specialist, your website SEO specialist, not for me. So what you want to do is take the support and give it to them and say, get to work, fix this stuff so that the next time we pr produce one of these reports, it's looking a lot prettier, a lot more green. Right. Okay. So that's a simple answer. All right. Because yeah. a lot of it really, I can't impact, but this will, you know, but when we get into the website, it'll be things like not having alt tags on photos or not having yeah. them optimized for speed or um, having dead links on a website from an old page you deleted and it's still, or a website or web page that does is not referenced anywhere else. It's just a page sitting there doing a whole lot of nothing. Cause it might be one that you forgot to put a link to as a, as a, as a, uh, as a menu op option. Okay. All of those things will come up in this report. Yeah. That's um, amazing. Yeah. There is a lot like Kira is a certified SEO. Um, she got certified mm. SEO with Google. Yeah. And so there was a lot of this stuff that she learned but to be fair, when you go back and you look at an existing website, mm. it's a lot of work to go back and add all those it's alt tags, all those images. But it's it's huge. It yeah. is incredibly important to do. So yes, mm -hmm. definitely. Yeah, there's and when it comes to sizing of images, another thing, another thing having to do with websites is speed is becoming far more important than it ever was before. Yes. Um, I've actually moved, uh, my web developer is in the process right now of trying to rework my website because you can imagine my virtual tours are huge. So the images load slowly and it's having an impact on my business as a result. So one of the things that I'm, because not all, like it, it's not an issue when it's hosted on Google Maps, but any of the other virtual tour content that I create that's not on Maps, that really slows it down. So making sure that you've optimized your images for, for quick loading is, is really, really important. Um, it's and going down to a the good server too. Cause what, what yeah. I had to do was, is, um, mm -hmm. I actually moved to a VPN. Yeah. So I, I, I use InMotion, InMotion hosting. Mm -hmm. 
and I purchased a VPN. Are you talking are you is, VPN or CDN? VPN. It's a virtual VPN. private network. V so virtual, I have okay, my own. Yeah, I have my own blade, and I have my own set of memory. I have my own hard drive, uh, an SSD drive. So I have my own right. 150 gigs of data. I don't okay. have a shared server with somebody that's you know. In, yeah. And if anybody doesn't, it, everybody has a different understanding of how this works. But in general, when you have a website, it sits on a hard drive that might be on there with 12 other websites or 20 other websites. So that if somebody on that website uh, sells cannabis <laughs> yeah. and they're very busy, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, your website's going to be slow because of theirs. So yeah. a virtual private network allows you to really have control and caching and speed. It's significantly more money. Um, yeah. significantly more. Yeah. It's but, a security silo is really what it is in a lot of respects. But it's too, speed you know? too. Just, yeah, just absolutely. ultimately yeah. speed. I mean. Yeah. The in between, the reason why I asked the question about the CDN is that's the, also another option that's available to you if you don't go down the VPN route is CDN, which is a content delivery network. And that allows you to have, like, for example, Amazon Web Services or um, um, uh, uh, Microsoft Azure or offer those as services. And you can then put your images on their platform. And what it does is that it helps to keep the, the, the location where the images are being loaded from is, 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 is the shortest point of call and optimized to the fastest possible networks that are available right. in that area. Right. So and it's also and really it important. Is every bit as important as this SEO that you're talking about, because mm -hmm. uh, I can't remember the statistics, but most people will wait like three seconds yep. for a page to load. And if, and if your page doesn't load, but your competitor's page load, you're, they're, they're not going to look at your site. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. They're exactly. Not look. What I did from a rank checker perspective in your case is I simply just came up with ideas. Normally when I do a, um, a, 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 a local SEO check, I'll ask the client to provide me with up to 50 keywords. But going beyond that starts to get into, you're getting into the weeds, you know, really. Um, but, you know, sometimes you can get away with 10 or 15. And, but when I actually look at, you know, the keywords like wedding photographer, California, re wedding photographer, Corona, you weren't showing up because that, that would, and that's because of the local SEO perspective. This is, and this is by the way, ranking on Google maps, Google mobile, Bing local, like these are, these are maps based information uh, warehouses. So for example, Peter, with the, with the, um, the gallery, you want that to rank really high. You know, that's the thing that you, you want to be, you want to be so that if somebody types in that suburb, wherever you, that the gallery is, you want to be ranked, you know, in the top three in that three pack. And then if you go a little bit further, it might be Los Angeles. If you're lucky enough, if there's, cause obviously then you're starting to add a lot of competition when you go a little further out, when the geography spreads out, um, you want to still see if you can rank reasonably high. And that's when you actually use Google maps and look at that to see, cause you might, you might show up at seventh or eighth. So, you know, you're not too far away. You just got to do a little bit more work to get up a little bit higher. Um, going down the local business listings report, this is where those directories listings show up. I'd shown a screen share of that. Uh, for example, bbb.org, Better Business Bureau. Now, are you there? Does they do they know you exist? You know, not a bad idea to be found there. Brown Book, City Search, Silex. I mean, I, the list goes on. Facebook, Foursquare, obviously Google. Um, and you know, and in this case, Google, you're there, so you're showing up. Hot Frog. Um, it, Hot Frog is not as big. It's actually bigger here in Australia. And keep in mind that. Every one of these listings is more popular in one country or another. For example, Brown Book is big in the in the UK because uh, it's a UK based platform. But do they do they have name, address, phone number, website information for businesses worldwide? Yeah, they do. So that's why they still are of, of value to be on. Um, and this is just alphabetically listed, by the way. Super Pages, you know, Yahoo, Yelp, all of these things. Little tip with, by the way, with Yelp, I'll give you a quick tip when it comes to reviews. If you do want to think in terms of getting reviews on Yelp because you know that Yelp has a policy. You can't ask for reviews with Yelp. It's against their, their terms of service. You're not allowed to ask for reviews on Yelp. But what you can ask for is a photo. Okay. So if your customer takes a photo of you taking a photo of them, it'll automatically then also provide them the opportunity for a review. So you don't, so that you're allowed to ask for. That's not a breach of the terms of service. It's a work workaround that you can still get. If you're asking for reviews and you want to include Yelp in the process, what you're doing is saying, hey, would you be open to sharing a photo of your experience in working with, you know, in, in, in me working with you? That's a way of doing it with Yelp. The other companies for the most part are pretty open to that. Another one that's a little bit like that is TripAdvisor in for the tourism industry. Interesting. Yeah. 
And then here's your reviews. This is where it gives you a review. Now, the world of reviews is usually referred to as an NPS, which stands for Net Promoter Score. And it's usually a, a, fa a factor out of five or a factor out of 10. So the ideal sweet spot in, in a factor out of five is somewhere between 4.2 and 4.8. And obviously, if you can be a you know, five-star, great, but that's pretty rare. Um, and if you're on a factor of 10, it's between eight and nine. That's really where you're eight to nine and a half. Um, as an example, Airbnb provide special services to people who score a net promoter score of 9.2 or higher. They will actually hire and pay for a photographer to do a photo shoot of your, of your, uh, of your premises um, because you rate highly on their platform if you're in the elite program. So there are benefits, literally, like even with Airbnb as an example. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Um, so you, what you're looking for here is basically the total volume. So you're sitting at 19 reviews we were able to find. So 19 people have spoken about you somewhere online. Now, I'm hoping you know who all 19 of those people are. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah I'm <laughs> pretty person. sure we do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, this, and, and that you've actually had a conversation and thanked every one of them. All right. Uh, and here's an example of those, some of those reviews, because here they are, but what I'm not seeing are your responses. Okay. Oh, yeah. I, okay. So that's that part of it. Now, when we look at your Google, my business listing, this is basically what are the other direct uh, in this listing, all of the other photographers that show up as wedding photographer in your area, you were listed at number 45. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. You're the 45th in the listing. So, so for you to do some work in this area would be, you know, the, the funny thing is, Troy, it wouldn't be that hard for you because you have plenty of content. It wouldn't take you long to start ranking up. You, I, whether you've been in the top 10 quickly, I don't know, but you could definitely go from 45 to like 15 pretty quickly. Um, you know, and then, then you start to nudge away if you, if you care to. All right. Look at the other thing that you'll find is that the ones who have a lot of photos, like for example, Natalie Hernandez, she's got 200 photos up there. All right. That's fabulous. Like that. Think of the amount of data she's given to Google to help her with her ranking. Think of someone who doesn't go to her website because she, because you, you know that some people will not go to your website because they don't want you to know that you're looking at them because they know the analytics works the way it does. So they, what they do is they go to your Google My Business listing and look there instead. All right. So make sure you've actually populated as much information as you can there, just in case they're one of these little sneaky ones that don't really want to know, don't, don't want you to know that you're looking at them. Right, okay. Right. All right. Um, and then we get into the on-site SEO. This is the part that really relates back to um, your website. Like I can tell right away, you do actually have a very, relatively fast site. Even 61 out of 100 is actually not a bad score. Um, and, and because let's face it, uh, photographers suffer the most because it's photos, right? They take up, they are slow. They eat up a lot of data. Um, so that's a really important thing to keep in mind. The ideal, what Google is looking for is a score of roughly about 80, 85 or higher as being sort of that, you know, we'll put you at the top of the ranks. One of the ways of doing that, by the way, is, and I found this out sort of the, you know, you know how both on, uh, on Adobe, all of us here probably use Adobe in one way or another, we have a, an account. Do you know that you actually get five free Adobe portfolio websites with your account mm -hmm. included, no charge. And every time I've ever used that for any of my content, it's super fast. That, like literally I can throw as much stuff at them and they optimize it and it runs really, really quickly. So if you're ever needing to basically compare your, your website to something else to see how fast could it be? Well, that's sort of like a good waterline to check against. Right. Yeah, um, optimizing right. those images are definitely a, a big part. Yeah, we use um, my my site is is obviously not optimized as much as it should, and we know that. But we mm. run everything that we post now through JPEG Mini. Okay, and there. You know, I've actually found a, a tool, and I've, I'll, I'll share it in the link afterwards. Is um, I've purchased a tool that what it does is it actually goes through and um, optimizes automatically and gives you the ability to update. Uh, things like your alt text at the same time so it squishes the images down and opens up the hey you don't have an alt text here fix that too um so it does so you literally can do it almost like a report so much more right effective. on the site you're talking about on the website on the website it, it's a it's yeah. a wordpress uh plugin yeah right the, the 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 drawback to those is is it leaves the big photo sitting on your server it's not yes. what your client hits 
-hmm. but it's still sitting on your server. So if you're trying yes. to keep your server space down, then that's a problem. Yeah, exactly. But, but yes, it will speed up your website, which is important, right? It's yeah, that's, exactly that's the goal. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And as we go down, you'll see that there's things like it's looking for errors, like page titles and descriptions. This is the alt tags, H tags, basically the header tags, you know, for, you know, for the most part, you know, that's basically, again, it goes back to, you know, what does a web developer really want? They want to look at this report and say, oh, okay, here's things I actually need to do. I'll, I'll give you one thing that I'll tell you right off the top. That's absolutely super simple to do to improve the quality of your website. As simple as this. Make sure that your phone number is at the top of the page all the time. No matter what, don't make it hard for people to call you. Seriously, just don't make it hard. Make it easy. You know, like don't make people hunt to fit. If you're a location-based business, make sure that your address is on the footer of every page. And if not, put it in other places and talk about it. Because every time you put your name, address, and phone number on a, on, somewhere on your website, it's one more thing that Google can scrape and find and add as one more tick box that you're basically helping people find you. Got it. Super, super simple thing to do. Okay. And that's pretty well making, what this report you're, does. You're just making work for a lot of us is really what I you're know. Doing. <laughs> <laughs> but essentially, like when I do these reports, like just to give you an idea, well, like what, what I, I do these reports, generally speaking, if someone says, I just want the report and I, I, I'm really not sure if I'm ready to, to do business with you. I actually offer these reports as a free service for the actual report itself. What I charge for when it comes to actually doing work is does someone actually want me to help them or analyze this report to give my advice as to what I would do next. And that's when I get into a, a fee for service for that. Okay, and then if they decide, was, I, yeah, yeah. I'm going to stop your screen share. Um, yeah, yeah, that, that was going to be my next question was that that report's amazing. Hmm. How how does somebody like me get that report? Do I go to somebody like you and say, "Hey, you know, yep. I've made all these changes. I need to get a report." Because I've got to think that a bunch of the people in the list are like, "I, I need a, I need a report." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, 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 absolutely. It's whether you deal with me or you deal. Basically, what you're looking for is someone who doesn't do SEO. You want someone who does local SEO, and and that's the difference. Okay. Because when you're looking at an SEO specialist, like as you said, you know, Kira is, is an SEO specialist and she will do a phenomenal job on the website and she'll do everything that's necessary because she'll know how to, she's properly trained to do that. And this report helps with that, but it's not its prior, it's not its primary intent. Now, the primary intent about this is helping from a local SEO perspective. So, so basically reaching out to someone who does that. Well, they'll be able to produce a report similar to this, hopefully, if not this one, there's a few different companies that provide these that we use. Um, and then usually the engagement process is typically once the report's produced and, and not everyone by, do, does these for free, by the way, I, I do them because it's just the way I, I, I use it as a lead generation tool. Um, but if you're, if you're hiring someone to, to do an analysis, usually they'll, it'll typically be a couple of hundred bucks for an analysis. And then from there, usually it's a recommendation for doing directory listing updates, which I, I the same company that I use that, that does this, has a team in the Philippines that literally do this. That's all they do. They just clean up your name, address, and phone number, website links, uh, and basic documentation about your business on all these directory listings to make sure there's no errors. It's very, very calm. I had a, I'll give you an example. This one of my clients is a, um, she runs a company called Premier Shades. She's a awning shades, blinds, you know, that kind of thing, right? And she had relocated 10 years ago here on the Central Coast. She didn't realize that five or six of the listings that were the really important ones, like yellow pages, were still listed on the old, for the old address. And she was wondering why people kept on saying when they come through the front door and her staff every once in a while would complain about the fact that they couldn't find her. It was because it's somebody who's old who still trusts yellow pages as their first search point. They didn't use Google and they went to that address. <laughs> You know, so it's little things like that. So if you relocate your business, you know, that one of the top things to do is to make sure your name, address, and phone number is consistent online. So that's the, you know, so that, that's another part of the service. And that's, again, it's, it typically, I recommend those, th those types of uh, services. You can get away with doing it once and leaving it alone. For the most part, if it's done, it's done. Things can change. So I do recommend once a year reviewing this, doing another audit, just to see if it's, nothing's changed, everything's okay. And maybe one, you know, and if you're a really, really busy business, you may want to do it quarterly. Like if you're a, a you know, high volume type of business, then 
doing this quarterly might make a lot of sense. But that's it. You know, like the people that I do this uh, more regularly with are the cafe restaurants that are the larger ones here in the area. Um, they they will sometimes get a report from me as as, fa as often as one month. Uh, but for the most part, the vast majority of my clients, I, they, I do this once a year for them. I say, hey, ready for another one? Yeah, okay, let's do it again. And they'll just go through the process just to make sure everything's okay. Well, that's fantastic. Well, thank yeah. you, Mark. I, I appreciate that. And I'll what I'll do is I'll mm -hmm. make sure that I put up your contact slide at the end cool. of the video when I edit Super. it. So that, All right. uh, so that, you know, so it's there so everybody can see it. So everybody can reach out to you and go, yeah. Oh, Mark, I need to record. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. up to you. It's yeah. up to you to manage the flow. Yeah, of, no worries. Uh, of, yeah. of love from that because eventually this will this will end up on uh, a bunch of people from my PV will look at it too. So cool. I hope that's okay cool. that you get a lot that's of attention. Totally, absolutely. But I, I, I the just one thing absolutely. I, I, I just want to throw something in here just to be sure, so that you know that when it comes to some of this, the like I'm happy to help anyone who's non-local, and I can do it anywhere in the world. But there will come a time when some of the recommendations will require somebody who's actually physically close to you. Because you know, if in the end, what I'm seeing is it's you're you're a location-based business. Let's say it's one of the venues you deal with, Troy, and they you know like they look at this and they go, "Oh my goodness, this is really important." Well, if they don't have a virtual tour, I'll you know let's find let's find a virtual tour photographer in their area that'll help them out because it might be the the you know the perfect tool for them to showcase their place. So often I do refer to others to to help you locally. We may need something like that. So mm -hmm. yeah, let's yeah. let's uh, let's chat after the program. So, cool. uh, Mark, thank you again mm -hmm. for being here. Uh, all right. Thank you so much for all that information and for coming in at the last minute. Um, for those of you that are still here, hang out for a little bit because after I stop the recording, we're gonna get to hang out and, and BS with everybody for a little bit. But um, until then, go to iepvd.com. You can check out what we have coming up in the future and. This slide that's going to come up when I'm done talking has all of Mark's information. So take care, guys. Stick around.